Jai Guru everyone and welcome to the second session of Symposium. We have with us participants from all across the world. Like our previous session of Symposium earlier today where we had speakers from Europe, Asia and Africa. In this session also we have young speakers from America and Europe who will talk on crucial issues relevant to not only the youth but our society in general. But irrespective of the diverse set of topics, we will see in this symposium journey that in every aspect of our life, how having a living idol in a form of Shri Shri Thakur helps us make progress on the path of existence and growth. As someone rightly said, we cannot always build a future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. And exactly this youth building man making factory was envisioned by Shri Shri Thakur and Nukul Chandra. Now, I would like to request two young brothers, Rithudeep and Rikranjan Marasini, who will be expressing their love through the song, All to Thakur I Surrender. Jai Guru! All to Thakur I That was a very uplifting offering by our young generation. Moving on, Shri Shri Thakur says, He who is loyal to his own prophet is loyal to all prophets. So now I would like to welcome Mr. Yusuf Khan from Canada. He holds a degree in MBA and a post graduation degree in marketing. Yusuf will be expressing his views on the topic Shri Shri Thakur not confined to a specific religion. Jai Guru, I welcome you. Jai Guru to everyone. Shri Shri Thakur says, God is for all. Prophets are for all, no compartment. But they are the fulfillers of all compartments in their equity. To create ism is the satanic dissuasion of people from unity, the God. This in a way self explains my topic for the day. Shri Shri Thakur not confined to any religion. It has not been a while that I have come under the parenting guidance of the Holy Master. 
I have got recently initiated, but my life has seen a 360 degree change and it's all positive in terms of personal well-being and professional success. My quest for inner peace has been quenched after taking the holy name and I could not be any less happy. I would like to believe that I am a person of logic and reasons. It takes me time to completely give in to something without knowing it incompletely and satisfying all my interrogations. A close friend of mine whose entire family has been a devout of Shri Shri Thakur had been doing jajan to me since a year now. I would have to say I had asked her innumerable questions I had in mind, but to my surprise, she always portrayed Thakur in a practical and pragmatic light. This always had me intrigued about satsang, but I had still not taken the holy initiation, maybe because my right time had not yet come. My first few months in Canada were very turbulent, owing to the cutthroat competition in the job market and getting acquainted with a new land and its laws had not been very kind on me. One day I was sharing my disappointment with my friend and what she told me then changed my life for the good. She told me sometimes to gain something, you must take a leap of faith because at times we do not know what is good for us until we take a step. This stirred something in me and I immediately said a yes to the holy initiation and slowly I started to understand the principles and the philosophies of the Supreme Beloved. I realized that dharma is nothing but to live and grow, to be and become and that Shri Shri Thakur is not about conversion but convergence. Conversion is not admitted by Shri Shri Thakur. This aspect of Shri Shri Thakur's view is worth elucidating in the backdrop of huge disturbances currently erupting in different parts of the world on this issue. This view of Shri Shri Thakur that there will not be a convert in his disciples is a radical departure from the practices observed in other established religions. In Shri Shri Thakur's view, one believer will accept Shri Shri Thakur as Guru and follow Shri Shri Thakur's principles. But that is not a reason for him to forsake his religion, whichever he or she is born into. That means a Muslim by birth can accept Shri Shri Thakur and practice his principles. Still, he or she will remain a Muslim. Similarly, a Christian can follow Shri Shri Thakur's principles and yet he or she will remain a Christian. Shri Shri Thakur never wanted a change of natural identity, biological, cultural or religious affiliation. As a Muslim, we believe in the concept of one God. I cannot distinguish between this logic and Thakur's logic as Thakur too believed in the oneness of God. In the holy book Satyanusaran, Thakur rightly points, Dharma never becomes many. It is always one. There is no variety of it. Views may be many, even as many as there are people. Still, Dharma cannot be many. In my opinion, to speak of Hindu Dharma, Christian Dharma, Mohammedan Dharma, Buddhist Dharma, etc. is wrong. Rather, there are so many views. In fact, there is no opposition in the views. Different views, the same way, feeling one in many forms. In Islam Prashanga, when somebody asks Thakur, what is the solution to the clash between the Hindus and the Muslim? Thakur answers this in a very simple manner, that there is no clash or difference. There cannot be any difference between those who believe in life and growth. I would like to highlight a very interesting thing. When I was getting initiated by my Ritvik Devta, Sanjeev Das, he told me something that touched my heart. He advised me, know Islam first, follow Islam religiously, offer namaz and do all your duties towards your natural religion 
and along with that keep Thakur as your idol, following his ideologies. This only explains me how Sri Sri Thakur teaches one to respect one's natural religion, yet be our supreme beloved. In Islam, we believe in the power of Allah, who is shapeless, formless, genderless. Many people might argue that accepting someone as a living idol can be a contradiction to this. But I do not think like that. Allah is still great for me and I wholeheartedly believe in the power. But in life, you also need someone in flesh and blood who directs you, guides you, shows you the right way, just like our parents and teachers. One whom you can see, feel and get inspired from. And Thakur is that living idol for me who anchors my life. In Islam, we also believe in the five pillars, namely Kalma, Namaz, Roza, Hajj and Zakat. If I must think about them profoundly, all these ultimately propagate life and growth to be and become just like Jajan, Jajan, Ishtaviti, Swastayani, Sadachar, Prayer and Holy Name. This is how I see Rasul's teachings in the teachings of Thakur and they are one and the same to me. I would like to refer from an article I came across which made absolute sense to today's topic. A new era began with Sri Sri Thakur Anukul Chandra, a new ideology was born. The ideology had continuity with the past, what is called eternal, and at the same time, it also had elements which are of contemporary relevance, socio-political, economic, and scientific, and therefore those were new. The ideology overall definitely had a new look, new spirit, new temper, new attraction, altogether a renovated package. Some such features of Sri Sri Thakur's ideology are clarity of concept, scientific temper, universal applicability, above the prevailing considerations like bias, superstitions, etc. Everything put together, the ideology was radical, out to bring about a transformation in person, family and society. Striking feature of Sri Sri Thakur's ideology is that it attempted to bring out and highlight the similarity amongst all religions in essence and in philosophy. This is a revolutionary step. Sri Sri Thakur attempted to bring out the common and the similarity in scriptures like Gita, Bible and the Quran. His attempt was to bring out the essence of all religions and to show to the world that it is the same eternal principle of life and growth. Secondly, Sri Sri Thakur attempted to bring out a fact that all the prophets are same. Expression and manifestation of one God appeared in different time. Mission is same and for the whole humanity. No prophet takes care of one segment of humanity and excludes some other sections. No prophet said to raise a wall between and amongst religions. This aspect of oneness of all past prophets has been a truism that Sri Sri Thakur wanted hard to bring home. He even said and demonstrated in his life that each successive prophet fulfills all the past prophets. Each successive prophet is an updated version of the previous prophet and therefore there is absolutely no scope for differences and the possibility of dispute is the least. I was attending a satsang recently where one Muslim lady was sharing her experiences with Sri Sri Dada. Her grandfather was a bosom friend of Sri Sri Borda and hence she referred Sri Sri Dada as Mama, a popular local term for addressing maternal uncle. Many people used to ask her why would she call Shri Shri Dada Mama and how is she related to him? One day she got fed up and told Shri Shri Dada that everyone keeps asking her the same question to which Shri Shri Dada replied that next time if somebody asks her this question she must say that they are the same blood. 
Such a simple yet gorgeous way of looking at it. Once Arjun asked Lord Krishna, What is the best way to worship him? Keshav replied, hey, He himself has lost counts of the number of incarnations he has. But the best way to worship him and attain salvation is to worship the shape and the form in which he is incarnated in every yugas. This again reiterates what Thakur's beliefs were. The goal is to reach him. Ways can be different, but the destination is one and the same. Satsang is considered as a man-making factory where brotherhood is not by blood or religion, but by the same idol and the same way of life. To conclude, I would like to say that coming under the guidance of Sri Sri Thakur, the Supreme Beloved, I have not only developed an ideal-centric life, but I have also known my natural religion way better. A true Muslim is one who should propagate for life and growth for himself and his neighborhood. One who can follow Shishi Thakur and yet maintain their religious affiliation by birth. In other words, the religious affiliations by birth are no barriers for a progressive living. By following Shri Shri Thakur's ideology, following him does not signify getting into new religious cult or into a, you know, a regimented order. Following Shri Shri Thakur means to adopt an ideological framework that invites and spurs all-round well-being of a person along with the family and society. Advancement of this path may break down the religion barriers and act as a catalyst towards progress. I would say that Sri Sri Thakur's ideology is liberal and secular. His way of life can be a befitting reply to religious radicalism and communal disharmony. With this, I end my discussion. Joy will to everyone. Thank you for sharing your significant insight. This is why Shishi Thakur is loved by people of all races, religion and caste. He said, more alive the adherence to the idol, more is man unshocked and unshaken. Proceeding further, now we would like to welcome Ms. Priyanka Berman from Canada. She holds a master's degree in business administration. She will be speaking on topic Thakur as a savior in modern day depression, anxiety and stress. Jay Guru, we welcome you. Joy Guru to everyone. My topic for today, that is modern day depression, anxiety and stress, is a burgeoning menace to the society. Modern day living is a multifaceted compendium of evolving science, technology and development. As mankind reaches mass, so does the mind its threshold. We are so preoccupied with the hustling and bustling of life that we fail to realize that our brains are becoming more and more wary. If I must define today's generation, I can use several positive adjectives, few being they are fast, competitive and goal-oriented. But often these elements do not knock our doors alone and along they bring their negative counterparts like overconfidence, ego and performance pressure. Depression, stress and anxiety are devouring our mental health like parasites. COVID-19 has worsened it a notch up. Fear and anxiety about a new disease and what could happen can be overwhelming and cause strong emotions in adults and children. Public health actions such as social distancing can make people isolated and lonely and can increase stress and anxiety. The pandemic has disrupted or halted critical mental health services in 93% of countries worldwide, while the demand for mental health is increasing, according to a new World Health Organization survey. Let us look at some modern day examples of adverse mental health. Rahul is employed with the top MNC and is also the top performer of the quarter. Everyone is celebrating Rahul's success and achievement. But what we fail to notice are the countless number of sleepless nights he has had, the gradual alienation from his family and the choking stress and anxiety that is screaming inside him. Similarly, Pooja is the topper of her class 
and all we talk about is her exemplary marks in her scorecard. But what goes unattended is the surmounting performance pressure from her teachers, family and peers that's slowly poisoning her from inside and pushing her towards a dark hole of depression. What can save us the unimaginable outcome? Even the colossal of ships are directionless without a captain. A person's life gets shaped and formed based on who or what is there at the center. An idol-centric life acts as an anchor in the worst of turbulences. To cope with depression, stress and anxiety, one needs to heal from within and spirituality has a pivotal role to play here. A glaring example is the tragic case of the famous Bollywood celebrity Sushant Singh Rajput. Despite having a seemingly perfect life, he could not fight with his complexes. And when his complexes got the better of him, he was coerced to take a drastic step. An idol guides one to control one's complexes and not be controlled the other way around. I will share my own realization about this. With Thakur as my ideal, I feel I have an inbuilt alarm within me, which starts ringing every time I'm swayed to take an incorrect decision or a mistaken step and I get immediately alert. Though we term this technically as sixth sense, but it's actually your idol who speaks to you as your conscience. As depression rises among adolescents and adults, more individuals are seeking help. And that help often comes at a cost of thousands of dollars a year in the form of psychotherapies, counseling, healing sessions, and so on. However, we often skip the underlying fact that our Supreme Beloved Shashi Thakur has already armed us to fight this nuisance with his simple yet life-changing coping styles and guidelines. These have always been in front of our naked eyes, but sometimes we fail to comprehend the healing beauty of them. Jajan, which translates to the self-exaltation, is nothing short of a healing therapy. It invokes spiritual awakening and instills spiritual consciousness within one. Often, sufferers of depression, anxiety and stress slip out on sense of purpose, a sense of connectedness. Jajan can help regain the purpose to exist, to be and become. Jajan signifies the exaltation of others and works in the line of a counseling session where you are posing as a counselor for someone in need and molding him towards the path of light and peace. Through Jajan, we come across various tales of Srishi Thakur and his mercy and miracles. We develop a sense of positivity and hope within us, thereby strengthening a positive frame of mind. Ishtavriti means the auspicious oblation to ideal. It develops the art of becoming giving and submissive. When you start your day with a respectful offering to your ideal, you ought to feel a sense of goodness, a sense of satisfaction deep down. And to feel good about yourself, to feel whole, it is a step towards affirmative mental health. Through Ishtavriti, you are also continuously aligned with your ideal who through your conscience guides you to distinguish between the right and the wrong. Let us now talk about Swasthani. Diet is such an important component of mental health that it has inspired an entire field of medicine called nutritional psychiatry. Harvard Medical School published that a dietary pattern characterized by a high intake of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, olive oil, low-fat dairy and antioxidants and low intakes of animal foods was apparently associated with a decreased risk of depression. Thakur Swasthani Vrata is a welfare scheme where welfare begins with well-being meaning welfare of the soul and proceeds with becoming meaning balanced growth and is sustained with the blessings of the beloved, the most beloved Shrishi Thakur. And it also emphasizes on avoiding certain foods that can accelerate excitement and aggression within us. If I must start to speak about Sadachar, then I must say cleanliness is next to godliness. Shushit Hakur said, 
Hygiene is the practice of principles of living conducive to one's existence and growth. Hygiene has three aspects, namely physical, mental and spiritual. One aspect is complementary to the other aspect. By practicing all aspects of hygiene, our nervous system becomes more receptive and responsive. Translated from Alochana Prasanga, Volume 7. We can only curb the trash out of our mind when our body and our surroundings are trashless. Nowadays, companies are taking a strategic approach to workplace mental health investments with dedicated and built-in meditation and yoga centers. Whereas we satsangis, we can chant the holy name even on the go without any structural requirement at all. Shri Thakur has codified laws and rules for a healthy living at each stage of human life that life becomes pure, progressive and prosperous. Thakur has mentioned in the holy book Satyanusaran. First of all, we must wage war on weakness. We must be bold and brave for weakness is sin incarnate. This weakness can be as much mental as physical. When we submit ourselves in his lotus feet, we relieve ourselves from the ever howling performance pressure because we have invested our belief in the fact that thy will is good. I do not know what will make me good. Let thy will be fulfilled in me. It is often prescribed that a person suffering from mental health issues should have a wide support network who he can trust and confide in. Satsang is also known as a man-making factory where we not only get familiarized better with our inner soul but have a chance of developing an unseen bond with hundreds and thousands like us who in turn only strengthen our support network and list of well wishes. I have had my share of depression, stress and anxiety too and I'm in no way an exception. But my complexes could never defeat me as I'm a believer of an idol-centric life. Thakur has always held my hands and showed me the way. We believe that the members of Thakur family are all seers and all knowers. They are aware of the past, present and future. When I was quite young, Shrishi Dada might have realized that my forthcoming life will not be all bed of roses. Once when I went to visit him, he called me closer and told me to hold his hand as tight as I can. I was quite nervous initially and with my hand shivering, I tried to hold his hand. He again reminded me to put as much pressure as I can. And finally, I exerted all I had. I still remember the radiant smile he posed after that. And he was suddenly very happy and told me very good. I was naive to realize the significance of that incident back then. But at this stage of life, I realized that he was trying to measure my core strength, my capability that day. He wanted to judge if I would be able to combat the upcoming obstacles in my life. And somewhere deep down, he was assured that I would overcome all of it. And that was probably the reason of that satisfied radiant smile he posed. Several, several times I have encountered Reverend Babai Dada with oceans of stress and anxiety clouding my mind. But even without us uttering a single word about it, he has miraculously calmed me down. Sometimes, even without a direct interaction with me, but through his discourses and remedies to others in front of me, thereby answering all single doubts I had in my mind. I would like to share a true story based on how Shrishi Thakur can bring us out from the deepest and darkest sinkholes to light and peace. The famous writer Shishendu Mukhopadhyay, at one point in his life, was combating with chronic depression. He had almost given up hope when respected Ritvik Devta Selenda advised him to take the holy initiation and assured him that if he does so, his depression will get cured in seven days. He accepted holy initiation and soon a private session was arranged between Thakur and him where he conveyed Thakur 
about his mental health and how he had lost all hopes. Thakur said him to not think about all that negativity. He must think that he is not subjected to DK, that he is immortal. Why should he think about death? After that enlightening session, he followed the principles of Shri Thakur religiously and miraculously within seven days he was cured of depression. This narrative was later pinned down by him in his book Kachet Thakur. What is this if not his mercy, if not his miracle? In the rat race of name, fame, success and materialistic gains, we often invite in some unwanted guests like ego, performance pressure, impatience and overconfidence in our lives, which in turn only increase the load on our minds and brains. But when we wear him, the Supreme Beloved, as our crown, the pain and weight instantly fade away. We need to have such an idol before us whom we can follow and be fulfilled to the best of our requirement and who can guide us in the most unerring way and relieve us of our mental agony. Continue to be under his parenting guidance. Keep following his principles. As Thakur has said, take to the feet of a true master. Go on taking the holy name and remain in the company of the devout. Truly, I say, you have no more to worry for your elevation. With this, I would like to end my speech. Thank you. Joy Guru to everybody. Thank you for sharing Shrishi Thakur's simple solution to such grave problems of today's world. Moving on, Shakespeare's once said, If music be the soul of food, play on. Now we will request Dr. Maya Basu from United States to express her devotion through her soulful music, Jai Guru.
Thank you, Dr. Maya, for elevating music. Love is the leave of meditation and meditates everything through service with the keen expansive flow of soul as said by Shishi Thakur. Next, I would like to request Mr. Srijan Banjara from United States to take the stage. He recently graduated from University of Connecticut. He will be shedding some light on topic love and meditation. Jai Guru, Guru Brothers and Guru Mothers. 
Today we are here at International Virtual Utsav on the Holy 133rd birth anniversary of Sri Sri Thakur on Chandra. I am very thrilled to be one of the youth speakers of today's ceremony. I want to thank all the youth satsangis for their constant support and motivation and appreciate their effort on making the youth symposium. The year 2020 has been a very challenging to us. The pandemic has hit us very hard and made our life upside and down. The social and economical aspect has led us to change our decision-making process. Those decision-making process which leads us to doing activities and those activities which reflects our personality. What is the cause of the growth of existence? How can we uphold our presence to the fullest? Even though when all this misfortune is going on, Sushi Thakur has clearly shown us the true tool, which is love and meditation. Today, I would like to take this opportunity to talk about how Sushi Thakur has always reminded us the importance of love and meditation. I will be speaking about his life experience and will try my best to present the essence of being a satsangi. I would also share my experience and how love and meditation has changed my perception of human existence. Early on, Sisi Thakur wanted to make his people nearest and dearest. It was shown in his character early on when he was a child. When he was a child and his father was sleeping, he used to wake up and even though there was a cold air breeze going on, he used to wave a fan towards his father, which showed a loving activity towards his father. He would do that so that when his father wakes up, his father can have him do something for him and then be pleased with it. And this is how Thakur expressed his love towards his father. And he has clearly shown us, he not only realizes that he loves his father, but he has shown us through activities, we can grow the seed of love in our heart from the beginning and work our way up through it. We all have read Satyanusaran, which has clearly shown that the mother's love is the greatest among all. The mother takes care of her child unconditionally, without any expectation. It is because of that unconditional love, unconditional serving towards her children, she develops enormous love. That is why Sri Sri Thakur wanted us to serve our family, our society, and our world without any expectations and cultivate the sense of love, thus love like a mother. In a book, Ram Krishna and his disciples, there is a quote mentioned by Ram Krishna Dev. He says, if you dwell so much on God's power, you cannot feel free to demand things from him. Things about his greatness makes him seem distant from him. Think of him as your very own through love. That is the only way you can realize him. We all know Ram Krishna Dev, even him. He said, with only love, we can make our God, our Guru, our own. And that is how Sushi Thakur said as well. So we have to make our love and we have to make our love so deep that it connects to Thakur. We all do our prayers every day, every single morning. And Thakur says, it is just not enough if you don't cultivate the sense of love and cultivate the sense of love of labor. So one morning at 5 a.m. around Himayapur, Thakur was surrounded by his devotees and one of the devotees would say, Thakur, we would like to serve you, serve you with love and prayer. And Thakur said, do you deny the prophets of all ages who have said, believe in me and all you need will be granted? The most fertile soil of love is labor. Thakur keeps it up. He says, prayer without action is a rootless vanity and will never be effective. Now you see, even though we pray so much, we do our reciprocity, it is not going to affect us anything if we do not work, if we do not show through activity. That is why it is really, really important to say that we love and also to show it through our activities. 
Thakur has shown us and made us believe that with overwhelming love in our heart, enthusiasm escalates and it results in surge of internal energy. Those internal energy and those escalated enthusiasm will ultimately give us so much energy that we can do work of many people. We will have the power of work, of doing work of many people. That is the main power of love and meditation. Thakura says, with love and meditation, you, we can conquer everything. We can conquer the universe. We can conquer Thakura itself. We can become the Parabrahma. We can become himself. But first, we have to love and we have to be in the deep state of meditation where we can connect with the universe itself. Thakura says, meditation is such a weapon that he says in his own words, try to draw your attention upon the spirit that is going on through the junction of the two eyes at the root of the nose. It is the spirit onward. Children, you must fix your attention at the root of the nose to have you and draw the spirit onward. This was my policy when I was Jesus. You can search it in holy books. He not only tells us to meditate, but now he gives us the way to meditate, the proper way to meditate. He is our true teacher. He's given us everything. The proper way to meditate is to sit down and then concentrate right here, right in between our eyes, at the root of our nose, and then bring the spirit of Thakur towards in us, towards in us so that we can connect to the universe, so that we can create that vibration, that name, the Nam, would give us such vibration that we can connect to the universe. Thakur says the sound, vibration, universe, all. With love and meditation, you can conquer all. That means the sound and the vibration. You can connect through it how we can connect through it by constant name. Name is a medium that connects universe's energy, Thakur's energy, and brings it to us so that we can accomplish everything we want. And none of the sorrow, none of the... Uh, Disbelief will be in our way. We will be out of everything. Every misery, I am sorry. Now, I would like to say something about my life experience, about love and meditation. Love which I have tried to love everyone in my whole life. And meditation has given me such a great experience of connecting to people. So, when I was going through my school time, I used to try to meditate as much as I can during the night time before going to bed and sometimes during the morning. And while I did that, it helped me very much concentrating in my class. I would be able to devote myself into the classroom and then not have concentrated and diverted. So this kind of made me very concentrated in the classroom and it helped me a lot to do very good in my class. Now, I am trying my best to do meditation every single day. About a year ago, I would like to tell a story. About a year ago, me and my friends, we went to Nepal. And we went to the base camp of Mount Annapurna, which is about 4,100 meters above the sea level. At that point, it was a rainy season, a monsoon season, and it was really cold up at the base camp. So we had to walk six days going up, and we had to walk back three days coming down. So while going up, Three days later, with all the walking eight hours constantly with the backpack on and with the rain, I was feeling under the weather. Something was going in my throat. Something was wrong. Some kind of infection or something was going in my throat. I was having a tonsil gland coming up. And every time I had something wrong with my throat, I used to be sick and I used to have a fever. So I was really worried about this because I had my friends with me in the trip and I want them to have a nice trip. So at night before going to bed, I was really worried. I had nothing, no solution in my head. So all I could think was about Thakur and about Na. So what I did, I sat down in the bed and I started doing meditation. And I told Thakur that I have no idea what to do, but I have to go up there at the base camp and come down 
at that point i would need your help i cannot go there like this because i might get sick tomorrow so i sat there and did deep meditation try to concentrate talk right here deep in my uh root of my nose and then later i fell asleep i slept right after i fall asleep i saw a dream i remember that in the same room where i was sleeping a spirit came in my room the spirit sat right on top of my body it was wearing a white cloth and it was a big figure it came right into my body and it climbed up to my body and told me to open my mouth and i opened my mouth and that spirit put a capsule a white capsule in my mouth and said to eat it and then i ate it and as soon as i ate it i woke up and i woke up and i saw the same room i was in the same room and i saw it there was no one there but i was feeling my neck and it was all gone everything was brand new everything was working fine i was not feeling tiredness i was not feeling anything my neck was healed and i was feeling very fine and i was really excited and i was now thanking takwar for helping me out and then helping me to continue my trip up and then i went up the next morning with all my friends and then we went to the base camp and then i returned successfully to nepal and then i went to deogar and i met with puchinia babada and puchipat dada I felt enormous love when I was there. Pujapa Dada were just looking at me and smiling and looking at me that just made me feel enormous love that I can never forget. At the end, I would like to conclude my speech by saying that love and meditation is one of the most powerful tools we can have. Trust me, everyone, there is no other way than meditation nam everyone every single time nam 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 and love love everyone love like a mother's love it can conquer everything by saying that i would like to conclude my statement and thank you so much everyone for making this isu itself happening and i would like to pray for everyone's health and then hopefully this pandemic is over soon jai guru bande prasadam Thank you for sharing your insight on meaningful way to connect with our supreme father. Shishi Thakur ji says, to know dharma of anything is to know the clue of its unfoldment and existential attribute. Science smiles there with its shiny resources of present and future in every loft mode. Now I would request Ms Queen Saikia who is pursuing PhD from University of Leeds UK. she would be sharing her views on topic spirituality science and youth thank you jai guru jai guru everyone myself queen saikya and i am going to cover something about spirituality science and youth based on the principles of shri shri thakur anukul chandra in his lifetime thakur anukul chandra had always encouraged a healthy and balanced way of living through the concoction of knowledge and spirituality according to him science and spirituality are not different things instead two parallel aspects of reality to attain true wisdom one has to explore both the fields but that ideal state of living is somewhere incomplete these days and unfortunately the younger generations are held responsible for the things going wrong around but why are we blamed for experiencing wrong things like anxiety depression panic attacks etc we have just evolved from the past and we inherit teachings from the past but what has gone wrong with time we often hear our grandparents and parents saying that they had relatively less complications when they they were young and they were like free birds when they were in their child in their childhood the famous turkish poet rumi says that the angel is free because of his knowledge the beast is free because of his ignorance and between the two remains the son of man to struggle it's us humans who who carry both the traits of knowledge and ignorance but the proportion of both lies in our hands science in a way provides proof of what already exists and spirituality explores everything beyond nobel laureate dr alexis carroll in his famous book man the unknown has emphasized on things that people should be mostly engaged in according to him modern civilization is degenerating because they have been fascinated only by the beauty of the sciences 
we need to understand more about our own body consciousness that are subjected to natural laws he said thakur anukul chandra was a doctor by profession and he had to deal with different categories of people from highly dignified personalities to the ones involved in illegal activities from his experience with dealing them he observed that the source of all illnesses were more due to mental imbalance rather than physical he encouraged his patients to get involved in meditation kirtans bhajans and get accustomed to vegetarian or sattvic diet people obliged by him and very soon got rid of their illnesses having realized their magical transformations in them people started following shri shri thakur as someone more than just a doctor soon many many more people became his ardent followers now many of you may ask how is it possible how does one get rid of their imbalanced state by just taking part in kirtans and bhajans well for now we don't have an exact answer to this question but science has definitely provided a clue for it in the year 2019 there is there are a group of researchers from the university of arkansas they they have found that music helps in synchronizing brain waves and brain waves are crucial to all aspects of brain functioning such as thoughts emotions behaviors and sleep in fact Uh, science has proved that the musical instruments help in expansion of cognitive capacities there is another article by a group of neuroscientists in harvard medical school who emphasizes that playing an instrument promotes expansion of the brain now how specifically devotional mu- music or the tools used in devotional music are related in improving cognitive function is not yet known however the answer It lies in the hands of present or future scientists hopefully now let's let's have a concept a simpler concept something that we learned in high school and have that as and just let's see how it's analogous to our belief system we have learned that our vision is very limited and it ranges just from distinguishing seven colors ranging from violet to red and this helps us in seeing objects around us and everything that we see we call visible because this happens to follow within the particular spectrum but there are more stuffs that we can't really see with our naked eyes for example the uv light which we get exposed to it whenever we go out in the sun the x rays which are relatively more popular and the infrared rays which which are there but we are our limited capacities don't allow us to see them we can't see we can't say that they are not there right we have realized that there are more things more important things that just exist and it's obvious that we might not sense all of them with our limited capacities so now if you say you believe in science but not in spirituality it means you appreciate bread but you do not care about the baker if you say you believe in science but not in spirituality it means you love the dinner cooked by your mom but you do not appreciate the efforts she made that with so as a youth my message to every young person listening to this is don't just follow what your peers say give chances to uncertainties accept things which seems a bit magical but gives you a dis- divine touch the human mind is very powerful and it can absorb information at a high speed transforming us internally even without our conscious will and our daily activities are bringing us changes even when we are least aware of it so while we have our consciousness within us while we are still young let's inculcate two important dimensions of reality which is science and spirituality thank you enjoy guru
Thank you for giving us an ecumen connection between science and spirituality. Now for another musical offering, we have Mr. Abhi Ghosh from UK who will present a divine song, The Lord is Here. Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Lord is here, have no fear. The Lord is here, have no fear. Say his name, hold him dear. He will shower you with his grace. See the divine in his holy face. He will shower you with his grace. See the divine in his holy face. Doyal Thakur is the Lord. Doyal Thakur is the Lord. Lord is here, have no fear. The Lord is here. Sing his name. His holy name, sing His name, His holy name. You will be changed, never the same. Joy and peace will comfort you. Your energy and strength He will renew. Joy and peace will comfort you. Your energy and strength He will renew. Repeat the holy name. Repeat the holy name. The Lord is here. Have no fear. The Lord is here. Ever love him, ever serve him, ever love him, ever serve all his rules, ever observe. He will ever in you reside only if you accept him inside. He will ever in you reside. Only if you accept him inside. Thakur Christ is the Lord. Thakur Christ is the Lord. The Lord is here. Have no fear. Say his name. Hold him dear. He will shower you with his grace. See the divine in his holy face. He will shower you with his grace. See the divine in his holy face. Doyal Thakur is the Lord. Doyal Thakur is the Lord. The Lord is here. Have no fear. The Lord is here. Joy Guru. Thank you for such delightful musical rendering. As Shishi Thakur says, be concentric, unrepellingly keep yourself satisfied and have bliss. With this, I would request Miss Ria from United States to take us through a journey to find truth. In our very next segment called Satyanarushan Discussion. Jai Guru. Jai Guru. Atul Chandra Bhattacharya was one of the dearest devotees of Sri Sri Thakur Anukul Chandra, the supreme love. When the day came that he had to leave Pavna for work, he felt extremely distressed and prayed with tears of love that Thakur, with his own hand, wrote down messages to guide him and keep him ever inspired with divine thought currents. At that time, Thakur was only 22 years old. In one spontaneous outpouring in the course of one night, Sri Sri Thakur wrote down these messages, unfolding everlasting life and light. These supreme messages are now available as the book called Satyanusaran, 
or the pursuit of truth. The prayer of the devotee ushered into the world a celestial stream that would enliven him, along with every other human soul throughout the ages. Today, on the occasion of Sri Sri Thakur Anukul Chandra's 133rd birth anniversary, devotees spanning across six continents have congregated virtually in order to further their journeys on this path of life and light. A group of our youth members will now employ the Socratic method in a question and answer format to discuss a few of the ambrosial methods of the Satyanusaran and to try and understand their real meaning. So let's start off our discussion by reading the following words from the Satyanusaran. Move forward, but don't try to measure how far you have gone, lest you fall back again. So Kajol, would you please share your thoughts on this verse? Absolutely, Ria. I understand the phrase, move forward. Here to me that if you start doing something, then you should continue doing it and not stop until you have seen it through completion. This is because if you look back to measure your progress, then you will fall back. Okay. And uh, why do you think that this happens? Can you please give us an example? Well, sure. So say that I am reading a book and if I start looking at how many pages I have completed, then in the process of checking how much I have read, uh, I have actually stopped reading during that time. And in doing so, have fallen behind in my progress. That's a really lovely example. Now let's go ahead and read the verse again. Kajol, could you please read it this time? Sure, yeah. Move forward, but don't try to measure how far you have gone, lest you will fall back again. Thank you, Kajal. Now, just to reiterate, let's go back to our book example. So, say after reading about 50 pages, you start checking to see how much you have read. What would that happen? Well, in that case, I will surely fall back because I spend my time counting the pages instead of reading. So I didn't make any progress during that time. Yes. The same thing happens for other activities also. Uh, so have you taken any initiation? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. So the same principle is applicable to our spiritual endeavors as well, including meditation and realization. Thakur has taught us that it is not good to measure your progress in these activities also. Lest we fall back again, we should just continue moving forward. Now we will move on to our next message from the Satyanusaran. Kajol, kindly read the next message for us. Sure, Ria. Feel but not overwhelmed, lest you will be unable to proceed. If overwhelmed, you must be, be so with love for God. Thank you. Now, what is your understanding of this line? Well, I think that overwhelmed here means to become attracted. So, Sisi Thakur is saying to not get attracted by seeing the grief of someone. Okay. But uh, does overwhelmed really mean attracted? Would you mind googling the meaning of overwhelmed for us and seeing what you find? Maybe that can help us better understand the meaning. Sure. Let me look up that really quick. Perfect. Varsha, until then, can you please share with us the meaning of feel in the message? Yes, uh, sure. So feel here uh, means that after experiencing something, I have come to understand it. Going by the book example, say that while I'm reading a book, I learn about something and begin to have an emotional attraction toward what I learned. That is one thing. And another thing is to become overwhelmed by it. Okay. So if reading a good book, I get emotionally attracted to it. Is that really a bad thing? Let's check back in with Kajol. Uh, what meaning did you find for the word overwhelmed? What is your new understanding of the sentence? Yes, Surya, I have found the meaning. Overwhelmed means to have a strong emotional effect on or to become impressed and shaken. I think I understand now what this statement means. So I will try to explain it using some examples from my own experience. Some people can become completely overwhelmed after seeing some blood. Other people may have a strong needle phobia. So much so that even when they see some else getting an injection, they feel that they are getting injected. And getting injected overwhelmed by it, they may faint. 
Well, let me give you an, another example of becoming overwhelmed. Is a person who sees a snake, tiger, bear, or some other ferocious creature and becomes so scared that they freeze up and cannot run away or protect themselves. Therefore, C.C. Tower says, feel but not overwhelmed, lest you will be unable to proceed. Thank you for that very apt explanation, Kajol. So, Varsha, would you like to add something? Yes, uh, sure. Um, I think I understand it, and I agree with Kajol. I've thought of one uh, more incident that applies here. Uh, so, say I go over to a friend's house, and then suddenly she becomes unconscious and falls to the ground. In the same scene, her parents are freaking out and crying. In such a situation, if I also become overwhelmed and freeze up, I'll be unable to call the ambulance. And then my friend and the whole situation is in more trouble. Somebody has to keep a level head at oh, that yeah. moment in time and take action. That's what I feel Sri Sri Thakur means when he says to feel but not get overwhelmed. Thank you both for your valuable inputs and examples. This message was really very good explained uh, by both of you. One final thing that I would like to note here is that Sri Sri Thakur has also said to feel and become overwhelmed only by the love for God. God is the embodiment of good, meaning everything that is supportive of our existence and growth. Sri Sri Thakur has said to become overwhelmed only by the love for God, because this alone leads to longevity, invigorates the intellect and strengthens the nerves. On the other hand, Becoming overwhelmed by negative things decays our energy rather than increasing it. So we are having such a wonderful discussions today and learning so much. So let's move on to the next verse. Varsha, would you like to read the next verse for us and start the discussion? Of course, sure. Um, the next verse is, serve as much as you are able, but take care you have no desire to be served. So uh, Sri Sri Thakur here says that uh, I should not have any desire to be served. I should not think or have the desire for people to serve me, but rather be focused on serving others. Yes. And let's first explore the meaning of the word serve that Thakur has used. Then we can better understand why is that that someone might want to get served. In the Bengali version of this verse, uh, as originally written by Sri Sri Thakur, the word used is Sheba. And Sheba means preservation, fulfillment, and nourishment. So Tuhin, after hearing this, what are your thoughts on this topic? There is an idea in my culture. A guest is equivalent to God. Therefore, I think when guests arrive at my house, providing them with suitable food and shelter is a form of service. I still have a question for you, Ria. Is there a broader concept of service that Thakur was referring to? I mean, surely there can be many other ways to serve. For example, when you perform selfless service for others, which supports their well-being, it makes Thakur happy. And in this way, we are serving him as well. In this context, another message from Thakur also comes to my mind. He says, you are for the Lord, not for others. You are for the Lord and so for others. As a result, I can think of any service to my environment as a way to serve him. That's actually a wonderful point to him. Maya, do you think you can add anything to this? Yes, Ria. Um, and actually, I agree with Duhin completely. So I, the way I view it is that anything living or non-living, it can actually be served. For example, if I have a book laying on the ground, maybe it's turned upside down, it's in its wrong place. Maybe it has some pages that are bent. So I can actually be the person to go pick that book up and place it in its right place, even if it's not my book. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's my book or not, because Sisi Thakur has told us actually to serve in this way. It's like you mentioned earlier about the root meaning of service, being preservation, fulfillment, and nourishment. So that's something that's so nice to learn from him and always to keep in mind. But like he says, without the hope that other people will serve me, one thing that I've noticed is that people who are accustomed to taking service from others, maybe they're in a position of power and maybe they have employees who work under them, maybe they have servants, whatever the case may be. Many times those people, they tend to become dissatisfied if those people make even the smallest mistakes. And I think that's because maybe they've become habituated 
to relying on that other person's service. But actually the good thing that Taku tries to teach us is that if we can just understand that God resides in those people as well, the people who are giving us service, then we would actually get the feeling to serve them as well. And by doing this, mutual affection between both the parties can increase. That's very true and can be applied in so many scenarios in our daily life. Varsha, would you like to summarize this discussion? Sure. Um, so making the ideal happy should be the main goal of service. In every situation, with everything, we can do something to please our ideal. If the person I'm serving is not nourished, is not fulfilled, then that service has no meaning. And my ideal is not happy with the service. Loving my ideal is my only goal. Very well said. Ankita, would you like to read the next part? Sure. So the next message is request, but do not seek to order. Thank you, Ankita. Now, Ajinta, could you please share your thoughts on this passage? Sure. So request, but do not seek to order. Here, Sri Sri Thakur is saying that whatever you do, you must do it politely. Whatever you say, you must say it politely. We should not ask anyone to do anything forcefully. You have very well explained the essence of this message. Some people tend to be impolite to certain other people like waiters or other people who work in the service industry, which is not good. We should always request others very politely. So Ankita, would you like to add something? Yes, Ria. Uh, if I seek to get things done forcibly, then I might get my work done a few times better, but soon people will stop following what I am saying. Instead, if we provide service to others, help others, and we are sincere in our request to them, they would be very happy to listen to us. I would like to share something. I read in a book that Nonida used to keep the money offering that people offered to Srishi Thakur. When Thakur wanted to use some of it, he used to say, Donnie, will you give me some money? He used to ask very politely. If someone who did not know the situation would have heard that, they would think that Thakur is requesting Nonida for some of Nonida's money. Okay. Thank you for sharing this with us. Now that's such a wonderful illustration of how generous and polite Sri Sri Thakur is. How sweet. He truly is our inspiration for how beautiful such a, a person can be in their own character and conduct. So now let's move on to the next verse. Never speak ill of others, but indulge in no untruth. Achinta, why would one speak ill of others? Well, some people condemn others to defame them, while others might speak ill to try and prevent untruth. Okay. Srijana, what is untruth? Something that is not truthful. Okay. So then what is truth? Achinta, you can pitch in if you want to. So the word truth in Bengali and in Sanskrit is Sat. And Sat is what which upholds our existence, literally. So I understand truth to be that which upholds our existence. What is against our being and becoming is untruth. And what protects our existence, supports our existent, existence, and uh, is truth. Sri Sri Thakur has asked us to not support anything that is against being and becoming. For example, following the rules of health and hygiene, like not touching food or or mouth or nose without washing our hands properly. Things like this. Going back to the statement, Sri Thakur has asked us not to speak ill of others. For example, we should tell someone's mistake or faults to others. We should not tell someone faults or mistake to others. In that case, I think we should explain his or her mistake properly to him or her. Yes, we should try to explain very politely to them personally, rather than just telling others. 
So the next statement in Satyanusaran is, be patient, but in being so, don't become an idle procrastinator. So what does being patient mean? Being patient means to be calm and composed. We are doing something. When we are doing something, we should do the work without being restless, without being annoyed. We should be calm and should concentrate on the task. Okay. And what does being idle mean, Ankita? Uh, being idle to me means being lazy, avoiding work and spending time doing nothing. For example, someone assigns me some task and I say that I will do it later. Although I am not doing anything at that moment. And what is procrastination? Procrastination means to delay or postpone action. And one way that I like to think about that is that every day I have a list of things that I know that I need to accomplish that day. For example, say that I need to write an email. So maybe I've started writing the email and it's actually waiting in my drafts folder to be sent out, but for whatever reason, I've not sent it out yet. Because of this, actually somewhere in my mind, I'm not able to concentrate on other tasks that I need to accomplish that day fully either, because this pending task creates an unrest in my mind and it distracts me from being present in my day-to-day -day life. So when we don't complete a task on time, and keep thinking, no worries, I'll take care of it later. This itself is called procrastination. Great example, Maya. So I think we all have understood the meaning of this very clearly. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Now, Neela, would you like to read our final section for today and share your thoughts? Yes, of course. The statement is, be swift, but don't spoil everything by your unwi unwise annoyance. Say I'm stitching a dress, trying to finish it quickly, but it is taking a long time. Seeing that it is not getting completed quickly, I get impatient and annoyed, and as a result, ruin my dress. Very well explained, Neelam. We must do every work swiftly, but we should also be very careful that it is completed properly and beautifully. If we hurry and get impatient in the process and get annoyed, then everything will be ruined. Yes, that makes sense. The more one concentrates on his or her work at the hand, the less one's agility is lost, thus leading to the successful completion of their work. And in this way, a person can become swift, but also patient at the same time. Wonderful. That concludes our discussion of the Satyanusaran for today. Thank you to every one of you for participating. Discussing these messages like this is such a wonderful way to learn and practice the messages of the Satyanusaran and make them real to us. Today's discussion was very interesting and fruitful, and we all got a better understanding of the valuable advice given by Sister Thakur. There is no end to learning, and we all should make it a habit to read, discuss, and understand it, and most importantly, practice it in our daily lives. Thank you once again to all who have participated in this symposium and discussion, both the speakers and viewers. There is no better way to spend one's time than in active pursuit of higher being and becoming. And we are also blessed to have Thakur to guide us on this path. Joy Guru to all and Bande Purushottamu. Joy. Joy. Joy Guru.